One, take one. Ha! Right. <laughs> yes, sir. Good. <laughs> you got your first piece of film, your first projector, when you were very young, about nine, didn't you? <laughs> yes. Um, do you want me to tell about that? Yes. You know, uh, cinema, film, was to me an obsession. I don't know, I saw my first picture when I was six years old, and then I was completely lost. And what I wanted most of all, that was to have an, my, a pro projector of my own, you know, a small one, just, just a toy, children's toy, not very expensive. And uh, uh, one Christmas, before Christmas, you, the Christmas presents were under the staircase in a, in a small, uh, what's, what's Pile. that? Pile. Yes, yes, Heap. yes. And I saw there was a brown uh, package and I knew this is the, the this is the um, uh, projector. And I couldn't sleep, I couldn't eat, and then the Christmas came and my brother got the projector. And I was so disappointed, so I, I think I'm, I'm dying, I, I can't survive this. But uh, we had both, my brother and I, tin soldiers. So uh, I bought, on the day after Christmas Eve, I bought uh, from my brother uh, the projector and gave him my whole army. <laughs> and then <laughs> that, was a, that, that, was, that was the beginning of my, uh, b b did you my life as, did a, you think as a filmmaker. <laughs> when I got the South Bank show, he was one of the people I wanted to make a film with. As far as I know, he hadn't done a film in, uh, hadn't been interviewed in English before then, not at length. And so I wrote to him, and he'd gone to Germany then for some carry-on he'd had with Sweden. I think they said he hadn't paid enough tax or something, whatever it was. He was down in Munich, and I went to, to Munich to see him in these terrible, gloomy studios. And we had lunch there, uh, and he's, he was a sort of weak porridge. He always had trouble with his stomach. and. Yet he always survived and did these terrific films and plays and, and so on. I'd seen most of his films, so when he said, what about The Seventh Seal and what about this scene and when that happened and the disquiet, oh, this, didn't that, what do you think? And he was very closely interviewing me. I think he was doing two things, finding out if I knew what I was talking about, but also practising his English. He was worried that he, would, wouldn't be, that he wouldn't speak it as well as he wanted to speak it. To cut to the chase, he said yes, and we went down there to do it. And I was... I was thrilled beyond belief. We planned it again and again. We sketched out ways to do it. The team of us, we got there to this small room which we had at the end of some long corridor in these gloomy studios in Munich. And he got in and came in and looked at it and he said, if you open that door there behind the chair, it'll give you. So the director was delighted to open the door. And he said to the uh, camera, lighting camera, Perhaps if you put the light a little away, cameraman did that. Not like Elizabeth Taylor wanted to make her face look better. It's because he thought the shot would look better, and he fiddled around like that. And we were all delighted. And in fact, he was setting up to direct the film. And then he delivered, I thought, a magnificent interview. Why right, don't you keep turning over? Do you know what's bad? <laughs> it's it's when you make an interview and you can't, uh, you don't find the words in Swedish or English or some other language and you hear the whole time the noise of the camera, the, yeah. the film running and you think, God heavens, <laughs> now it starts to cost money. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm very afraid of the most of things that exists in, the, in, in this world and especially I was very afraid of death. And then I, I thought I didn't think I just made it. I wrote this uh, Seventh Seal. And uh, the Seventh Seal is about death the whole time. Death turns and up right at the very beginning death, of the film. Yeah. Death is uh, present the whole time in this picture. And everybody in this picture reacts 
differently to death. And after that uh, picture, of course, I still think very much about death, death and, and um, so, but after that picture, it's not an obsession anymore. I, I, uh, I just can live with it. So that uh, the picture was a good medicine, if you, if what, that was what you meant. Yes, I wondered if it were. Yes. The film starts with the knight on the shore playing chess, and then death turns up rather like a monk. Why yes, or a clown, it? Yes, yes, if you want it, yes. You, you how you decided to make him a man, uh, yes, rather yes. than a presence. Uh, yes, because uh, uh, I, 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 I that is the fascination and the magic of of the stage, or the or or the, the cinema, or the picture. I think it's marvelous. If you if you if you take a chair, a, a very very simple chair, that chair and says, this is the most expensive, most fantastic, most wonderful chair made in the whole world, because it's completely made by diamonds. If you, you say that, everybody will believe it if you show the chair uh, on the stage or in the film. And then everybody will handle it that way. And they, I think that's the magic. So if you say, if, if uh, the death comes, an actor, just uh, uh, with makeup, as a uh, mix-up as, as, a, as, a, as a clown and uh, a priest, and, just, uh, and, uh, and the, the knight says to him, uh, you are the death. And he says, yes. I, or he says, I am the death. You will believe it. And I think that is, a, is, a, is, a, is a, an incredible magic of, of, of filmmaking or, or theater making. You believe everything. I was in his presence when someone asked him, what, do you th what is he trying to do when he films, when he makes the film? And he thought about it, as he, very, as he does in uh, Melvin's interview, he thought about it carefully and then he said, well, I'm not making, I'm not trying to make it real, I'm trying to make it alive. And that was his guiding principle when he was shooting, is to make it live. If you, if you just want to create a universe, a, a little universe of your own, uh, including your dreams and your ideas and your visions and your thoughts, it's, 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 now I talk a little bit romantic, but, but I, I hope you will forgive me for talking that way. Uh, um, uh, you, God heavens. <laughs> it, was, it was a ghost. No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Can we go on? Yes. yes. Uh, you know, this universe is not uh, the reality. Reality always uh, makes sabotage to to your uh, to your fantasy to your dreams so you have to take uh, uh, details out of the reality and put them into your university but those details must be absolutely perfect uh, to to fit into this little universe and this universe is of course very limited but if it's the right construction of it it will be a perfect mirror of the reality around you. Right, if you're ready, I'll put a board on. Okay. Two, take one. Second that. Two, take one. So, from the outside, it seems one of the things about your work is that you work with a nucleus of people, uh, the cameraman, uh, one of two cameramen, yes. and later rely more on more on Sven Nickvist Nickvist Sven Nickvist Nick yes and uh, the actors including von Seidoff and Gunnar yes. Bornstand and Harriet Anderson and later Liv Ullmann and so a nucleus of actors going through yes. what are the advantages of this? Uh, 
you know, sometimes there is a miracle happening in front of the camera. Sometimes, not very often, but sometimes. But if you are very close to the actors and close to the people around the camera, and there is an atmosphere of, of confidence and, and uh, confidence, Re what I mean really, real confidence, it's suddenly something happens in front of the camera and and uh, that is the most beautiful thing that exists and uh, and uh, to wait for the, that miracle and to hope for it is is uh, the best thing in the world and what happens is that something new is created this is, is something with this, uh, some third dimension suddenly is present something that uh, you can't uh, calculate or, or find out uh, or rehearse. There is something that happens. I don't know. I, I can't explain that. But it's, uh, it's, <laughs> it's the magic. Again, the magic. Yeah. What I learned from you first was mm -hmm. that one man can control everything in a film. You, you must keep in your head the one vision all the time. Oh, yes. It? Oh, yes. It has to be a, a, like a flu. Uh, like a, a flu, uh, like a virus. You mean? Yes, yes. It's, it, it, I have to be. Uh, I have to be involved with a flu, with a virus, and that virus has to be. Uh, everybody in the studio to be has to be infected by this virus. The thing about Bergman was that he was making a film every year, more or less, and. Uh, he, he was in this extraordinary position where he would, he wrote a script, shot a film, worked in the theatre, married all those beautiful women. I mean, how he fitted it all in, I don't know, but he he did. He had a great charm with actors. He he could find performance out of an actor unexpectedly. He had this uh, certain way of taking from actors and burrowing in and finding something that he needed. You, you spend a lot of time in your films on the human face. Oh, yes. A lot of time. Um, and you've said that faces are the most interesting thing it's, to you. It's, it's, uh, I think it's a big thing. It's, it's, very, uh, it's very clear. Uh, the, 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 the face, the human face, is the most cinematographic uh, thing that exists. It, it's, it's sensational. You can, also in the, in the television, you can sit fascinated and look at a face for hours, because it's, it changes the whole time. Let's, let's take Wild Strawberries, let's take mm. that. Um, how did Wild Strawberries start? It started... Uh, <laughs> it started uh, just with my, my grandmother's flat in, in Uppsala. I um, went with a car from Stockholm to Dolekalia. And I love very much to go up very early in the morning, at 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the morning. And the street was empty, nobody there, and uh, the birds were singing, uh, uh, as you know, as obsessed in, in, the, in the spring. And then I went out of the car and, and crossed the street and went into the backyard and uh, the staircase and up to the front door of my grandmother's flat. And everything was exactly as it was that time. And then I had the feeling, if I know, as when I was a very small little child, six, seven years old, open the, the door to the kitchen, everything will be exactly as it was 
when I when I was uh, ten years old. And uh, it's it's uh, almost uh, photographic. Uh, it's, it's, it can be very fascinating. And sometimes when I feel unhappy or insecure or something like that, it can be some sort of a technique to go back just to this uh, part of my life when I felt, by my grandmother, I always felt very secure and very at home. It was m much more difficult uh, with my parents and why my brother and sister and uh, at home. But with my grandmother, it was always very patient and, and secure and nice. His demons were to do with his childhood, you know, with his father and uh, his uh, and this uh, religious imprint on his on him, which uh, he took a long time to get rid of. Uh, and he was inhibited in many, many ways. You have said that each film is to be your, you think of each film as your last. Yes. Do you mean that? Yes. It, I said it 25 years ago or something like that, so it's a long time ago, but I always have the feeling, if I don't think it that way, if I don't think that way, this picture will be my last picture. Uh, uh, I will have some considerations, you know, I will think I have to be sympathetic to this one and I have to find out uh, how to please that one or I, um, uh, how to finance it so it will be a, con uh, I can continue. It's the only thing I have to be loyal to, it's the picture and the people uh, around me, uh, together with me, making the picture. Everything else is of no importance. And uh, it has to be the last picture. It's nice to sing that way. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> it's all over. <laughs> ah! <laughs> 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 oh, God heavens. <laughs>